Owning a Lambo, aka Lamborghini, is a dream for everyone. You can show it off to your friends, impress your boss. Owning a Lamborghini is a milestone of success. Lamborghini was made by Ferruccio Lamborghini, who was a lover of luxury cars. He bought Ferrari and went for a long trip. He found the interior of Ferrari was substandard and its clutches were bad. He was not satisfied with after-sales service of Ferrari. So he wrote to Ferrari's founder Enzo and complained about the problems he faced. In return, he got a very unpleasant response from Enzo Ferrari. The clutch is not the problem. The problem is you don't know how to drive a Ferrari and you break the clutch. Ferruccio Lamborghini was easy to get angry and he wrote back, Dear engineers, I'll never buy your cars again. From now on, I'll make my own cars. Then I can be sure they work the way I want them to. Within one year, Ferruccio Lamborghini created his perfect and better car, and this way, Lamborghini was born. Ferruccio Lamborghini lived from 28th April 1916 to 20th February 1993, and during his lifetime made his own name famous. It still graces some of the finest sports cars in the world, but his beginnings were quite humble. His parents had been grape farmers in Ranazzo from the commune of Cento in the Emilia-Romagna region. He was adept at all things mechanical, which is what drew him towards making tractors in 1948. That was the year that he founded Lamborghini Trattori, which rapidly established itself as an important agricultural equipment manufacturer during the post-war economic boom that Italy enjoyed. An oil burner factory, Lamborghini Bruciatori followed in 1959, which would later transition to manufacturing air conditioning equipment. This was followed by Automobili Lamborghini in 1963, the car company, and Lamborghini Oleodinamica, a hydraulic equipment manufacturer, in 1969. Lamborghini had disposed of most of his business interests by the late 1970s, and he spent his retirement in the pursuit of winemaking at his estate in Umbria. Want to know how Ferruccio Lamborghini did it all? Watch the full video. Ferruccio Lamborghini – How a Poor Grape Farmer Accidentally Made Lambo We at Business Chronicles tell the stories of extraordinarily successful people. Please subscribe to our channel to help us in making more videos. As a young man starting out on a farm, Lamborghini was more interested in the machinery than growing crops. His interest in all things mechanical took Lamborghini to the Fratelli Tadia Technical Institute outside Bologna. In 1940, he was drafted into the military and joined the Italian Royal Air Force, serving on the island of Rhodes as a mechanic at the Italian garrison there. Thanks to his abilities, he rose to supervise the vehicle maintenance unit. When Rhodes was captured by the British at the end of the war, he was taken prisoner, and he only returned home in 1946. He married, but the following year his wife died while giving birth to Tonino, his first child. Following the war, Lamborghini began a garage business in Pieve di Cento. In his spare time, he modified his old Fiat Topolino and built tractors, the first vehicles that would bear his name. He turned his modest Fiat into a racer and tested it out in the 1948 Mille Miglia. It lasted 1,100 kilometers before finally coming to a halt in the town of Fiano in Turin. It presumably could have gone further had it not met the site of a restaurant. In the early years of post-war Italy, Lamborghini saw the possibilities for a reinvigoration of the industrial and agricultural sectors. He based his first tractors on the six-cylinder petrol engines of Morris trucks, along with differentials from ARAR centers and other parts from military vehicles. Petrol was very expensive at the time, so Lamborghini built his own fuel atomizer. This meant that his tractors could be started with petrol before switching to the cheaper diesel. The Carioca was a success and it led him to founding Lamborghini Trattori. The tractor business grew, Lamborghini prospered, and he began to purchase various exotic cars. By the early 1950s, he owned a Mercedes-Benz 300 SL, a Jaguar E-Type Coupe, and two Maserati 3500 GTs, which he described as heavy and not very fast. In 1958, he went to Maranello to buy a Ferrari 250 GT, a two-seat coupe with a Pininfarina design body. It was the first of many and although he liked Ferraris, he considered them to be track cars designed for the road with poorly made interiors. He thought that such exclusive cars should be much plusher. 
He was also dissatisfied with Ferrari clutches, which often require trips to Maranello where technicians would take hours to rebuild them. These frequent visits left Lamborghini dissatisfied with Ferrari's after-sales service. But when he made Enzo Ferrari aware of his misgivings, he was ignored. All of which helped to explain how Lamborghini turned his attention to building something better than a Ferrari. He started by modifying one of his own 250 GTs, which ended up performing better than stock versions. His goal was now to create the perfect grand touring car which he thought should offer high performance married to excellent road holding, good ride quality, and a well-appointed interior. As a good businessman, Lamborghini had also worked out that if he used some of the components from his tractors in a high-performance car, then he could triple his profits. In the 1970s, his company started to experience financial problems. Lamborghini Trattori had been exporting half its tractors to South Africa, but this order was cancelled in 1971. A coup d'etat in Bolivia resulted in the installation of a military government which cancelled another large order. To make matters worse, despite having fewer customers, his unionized workforce could not be laid off, which caused tremendous financial strain on the business as a whole. Lamborghini sold his entire stake in the company to rival tractor manufacturer Same in 1972. But the rest of the group was also struggling financially. The carmaker had to cut back on development and Ferruccio eventually sold 51% of the company to wealthy Swiss businessman and personal friend Georges-Henri Rossetti for $600,000, giving up control of the firm he had created. He did remain involved though by working on at the Santa Gata factory. Next came the 1973 oil crisis which hampered car sales around the world, particularly those at the higher, thirstier end of the market. Buyers were now looking for more economical vehicles, and by 1974, Ferruccio had had enough of the car industry. He cut all ties with the vehicles he created and sold his remaining 49% stake in the company to René Lemaire, a friend of Georges-Henri Rossetti. He continued his heating and air conditioning company Lamborghini Calor and created Lamborghini Oleodinamica in 1969. Bulls played a big part in Lamborghini's life. In 1962, he visited the ranch of Don Eduardo Miura, a renowned breeder of Spanish fighting bulls in Seville. Lamborghini was so taken by the impressive and majestic Miuras that the raging bull became the emblem of his car company, and one of those vehicles would also come to bear the name Miura. The Islero was named after the Miura bull that killed the famous bullfighter called Manolete in 1947. Another car, Espada, means sword in Spanish and can also refer to the bullfighter. The Lamborghini Jarama is named after the historic Spanish bullfighting region, but there is also a Jarama motor racing track. In 1974, the Lamborghini Yuraco was named after a breed of bull, but then came an exception, the Countach. Not a bull this time, but a reworking of Conta, an expression that conveys astonishment in Piedmontese. The rumor goes that this is what vehicle stylist Nuccio Bertone said when he first saw the prototype. Other bull-named Lamborghinis include the Halpa, the Diablo after the Duke of Ragua's ferocious bull, Murcielago, a legendary creature who survived 28 sword strokes and was spared for his efforts, Gallardo, named after an ancestor on the fighting bull family tree, and Reventon, which got the better of Mexican toreador Felix Guzman in 1943. The Estoque concept car was named after a bullfighting sword, while the Aventador was another bull's name. All of the companies that Lamborghini was forced to abandon are still in operation today, in one form or another. Tonino Lamborghini designs clothing and accessories. He also created an electric microcar called the Town Life in 1999. Patrizia Lamborghini, Ferruccio's daughter, operates the winery on his Umbria estate. In 1995, Tonino opened a museum to honor the Lamborghini legacy, Indoso Ferrara. In 2014, this moved to Argelato, Bologna and is now called the Ferruccio Lamborghini Museum. Ferruccio Lamborghini was born to a poor family and soon he became very successful due to his understanding and knowledge of mechanics. He was able to start a tractor company and once he found gaps in Ferrari, he filled the gap by creating his own car, which we call it today a Lamborghini. Thanks for watching.
Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this.